Hello peasants! Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be going through the process of sewing a Mennonite wedding gown. Sewing a Mennonite wedding dress is not that much different than just sewing a regular wedding dress. Some things will vary depending on what the bride's church allows when it comes to the style of dress she can make. So for example, the bride that I was sewing for did not have a lot of church rules regulating what she could not have on her dress. So we sewed a very long train on her dress. It did not need to be caped, so it was just a basic bodice, and she was allowed to have lace sleeves without any lining underneath. Now, it's going to vary for some churches. I have a lot of friends that come from churches where, you know, their dresses have to be caped, their skirts cannot touch, their, the back of their skirts cannot trail on the floor, like they can't have a train, they can't wear a wedding veil, they have to wear um, just a normal Mennonite veil or neck covering or headscarf, whatever they, their church usually uses for a head covering. So it's really going to vary on the church and the group of people, and you know, you cannot stereotype Mennonites every group is going to be different about what is allowed at a wedding and what is not, and whether there are specific dress requirements for a wedding gown. I will say it was a lot of fun to make this dress because she did not have a lot of church rules dictating how her dress had to be made. So, you know, it was a lot of fun. You know, I enjoy drafting a skirt train and, and some stuff like that. And one of the most interesting wedding rules I have ever heard of is a group in Canada who do not allow flowers in their sanctuary. So brides will have flowers in the foyer of the church and in the gymnasium or wherever they're having the reception. And since they cannot carry bouquets into the sanctuary, the brides and bridesmaids buy clutches and carry clutches up the aisle, which is just such a unique thing. I haven't been to a wedding <laughs> where a bride has carried a clutch up the aisle, but I did go to a wedding of a girl from that specific community, but she just chose not to have flowers or clutches, period, so she didn't carry anything up with her. It was such an honor to make this dress, and it was one of the most exciting sewing commissions I have ever worked on, mainly because everything turned out right and there were not big issues. A little bit of background before I dive into the making of this dress. This bride did not have a specific pattern for her. Her and her sisters all used essentially the same bodice pattern, and they just altered it every time they made it to fit whoever they were making the dress for. And they did not even have a skirt pattern drafted. Every time they sewed a skirt, you know, it was, they just made it up as they went along. So she sent me the bodice and sleeve pattern. And then what I did was I took an existing dress of hers and I made a skirt pattern from that. And then I sewed her a mock-up. So I basically made her an entire dress but I sewed it wrong sides together, so all the seams were on the outside. I shipped the dress to her, and her and her sister went and pinned in every place on that dress where there was excess fabric so that it fit her like a glove, so that the dress was made exactly to her shape and measurements. Then she shipped the dress back to me. I marked where all those pin lines were, then ripped the dress apart, which was very easy because I only basted it together. And then I took the fabric and I laid it over the pattern and then made the changes and then altered that pattern so that it specifically fit her. And so then after her wedding, you know, I sent her the pattern. And now whenever she makes a dress, she will have an entire pattern that she knows is going to fit her like a glove if she makes it exactly like that pattern says. So that's essentially how I do pattern altering, or at least what I did this time, and it worked really, really, really well this time. So I definitely recommend that method if you are a girl that does not have a well-fitting dress pattern. So that being set aside, I think we can get into the sewing of this, so come along and find out how a Mennonite wedding dress is made. I started by cutting out the crepe, lining fabric, and imported French lace. All of the fabric came from the Fabric Attic. I'll leave a link in the description.
finished cutting out all of the overlay pieces. This is the front of the bodice. These are the two backs laid on top of each other. And then these are the sleeves. So my customer wasn't super comfortable with her sleeves being entirely see-through, especially from like here up. And it's pretty common for most Mennonite groups to ask their church members to at least have their arms covered from the shoulder down to about mid bicep. It's not always a hard and fast rule. People can merge a little bit and it's not always a huge issue. Um, but for her, she wanted to have a little bit more coverage in this section of her arm. And what a lot of Mennonite girls tend to do is they will take their lining fabric and they will make a sleeve underneath their lace sleeve that comes to mid bicep or down to the elbow. Usually it's mid bicep. And so you have this lining under the lace and suddenly it just chops off halfway down the bicep. And I personally think this looks very tacky and unprofessional and kind of like not beautiful at all. That's my personal opinion. But the way that this bride and I decided to combat that issue of the sleeve being see-through up in this section was taking lace and just overlaying so that it was more filled in. So you can see, you know, this part of the arm is fairly see-through. But then I have three layers of the lace pinned on here going up and over this part of the sleeve just to give her a little bit more coverage there. So I need to go and baste all this down and I'll probably have to do hand tacking along this edge right here to get it to stay down. But I'm gonna go ahead and machine baste all the way around the perimeter so that I can go ahead and start assembling stuff. And you can see how it overlaps, but from far away, it just kind of blends in and it looks like the fabric was made for the sleeve shapes, which I think is just so cool. And I feel like this is a way to avoid kind of that tacky look, but it still doesn't entirely eliminate the problem of this section being see-through. Cause you know, you can see there are little holes here, but I think for this bride, it's not gonna be that big of an issue. For other groups or other people, it probably would be an issue, which is why there are girls that don't really have a choice except lining their sleeve down. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing how these sleeves turn out. So I have got all of the darts ready to sew. There are 12 of them, and this is just the bodice. So I've got the lining, the fashion fabric, or whatever you want to call that, and then the lace, which totals 12 darts because there's two in the front and two in the back. And then there will be four skirt darts. Finished <sighs> Please, no foot in the camera. There might be people that watch this Ew. video that would have find that attractive. Okay, so I have all the darts sewn, and now what I'm doing is just, I pinned the lace onto the fashion fabric, and I have it pinned all around, and then I'm just gonna baste that. I have this back piece done. I think it's so yummy. Isn't it yummy, Lil? She's delicious. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and base these pieces down then, but for now, I'm going with her, oops, my fingers, I'm going with her for fingerprinting because, because she's a criminal. I am a criminal. <laughs> so, Lil, why don't you tell them what went on with your fingerprinting? Um, apparently my fingers are, like, weird or something because she had to make like seven attempts for each of my fingers for it to actually register as a fingerprint. 
Yeah, it was almost like you filed your prints down before you took the test. Listen, nobody needs to that. <laughs> On the way home, we stopped to see my roommate's lovely mother, and she had just refinished finishing their bathroom. And oh my goodness, it was gorgeous. There was so much marble. And the cool thing about all of the mosaic work that they did around their bathtub was that it was custom made, which I thought was the coolest thing ever. After basting all the lace to the bodice, I sewed down the shoulder seams. So I have stitched down the shoulder seams, and since this is actually pretty bulky, I am going to cut the lace down a little bit and just grade those seams to leave it lay flatter. And then the seam's gonna get thicker too because the lining is going to get sewn under this. I am going to sew the neckline next, and then I will probably baste the backs down together and the waistlines, and then I will put the sleeves in. But I'm really pleased with how it's coming along so far. Good morning, peasants. It is another day. Last night, this is what I got done. Basically have the bodice assembled, the neckline edges sewn, the arm seams are done. I set in the sleeves, the seam allowances are graded. So on the bodice, I just have the zipper to put in, and then I left the side seams undone because I'm gonna do that last. Since the bride wants to be able to make last minute alteration fits, we decided the easiest thing to do would just be to seam the arm down through the waist and all the way down to the hem of the floor. So also this will all get cut away at the very end just because in case this is really fragile I just want to give it as much of a chance as of living as possible. So that's what it's looking like so far. I am just going to be sewing up the skirt today, putting in the zipper, sewing up the side seams, and then I just have to hem it. Oh, and I also, with where we double layered these sleeves, I need to tack these down so that they're not fluttering. So I'll probably do that. I'll probably have to do it by hand. So yeah, let's see what I can get done today. Also, since I started YouTubing, my machine is turning orangey yellow. You can see it's discoloring. This was pure white before I started YouTubing, and I think it is because of my ring light. Apparently, light actually turns white plastic brown or yellow, so I was looking at ways to turn it back to white, but everything basically said go and soak all your plastic parts in water. I cannot so soak my sewing machine in water. Yeah, I can soak this tray, but you know, I can't soak this thing. This is part of the machine. So if any of you have tips on how to re-whiten plastic on a sewing machine, do leave a comment down below because I would love to turn this back into white because I hate how it looks. All right, I have the darts all pinned up, so I'm going to stitch them up. Then I am going to attach the front skirt to the front waist of the bodice and the back pieces to their corresponding parts. Then I will put in the zipper and then sew up the back seam. I also need to mention this. So the bride, she wants the scalloped edge to lay over the finished waistline seam. So I am leaving this loose and the seam allowance are 5 eighths of an inch. So. I'm leaving this section right here. I didn't baste it all the way down because I'm gonna attach the skirt here and then this will just fall over and then it'll get caught in the side seam allowance. And so she'll have this beautiful scalloped edge laying over the skirt and the fashion fabric and the lining are gonna be, you know, in the seam. 
So that is how I did that. It really wasn't, it's not even that difficult of a concept, but it took me about 15 minutes to figure it out. And then I was like, duh, that wasn't that hard to figure out. <laughs> I've stitched the front of the skirt to the front bodice, and I'm going to grade the seam allowances, but before I do that, because I really don't want this seam falling downwards towards the skirt and showing through the dress because this fabric is pretty sheer, I'm going to press it up and top stitch on this side. Top stitch that seam allowance up. Normally I would not do this because I think it looks really unprofessional, but because this lace is going to be coming down over and hiding that top stitching, I feel comfortable with doing that and that'll just keep this seam pushed up. Uh, and because this is, the bodice is three layers, this seam line isn't going to show through. So that is what I am going to do now and then I'll just attach the back skirt pieces. You can see I kind of clipped and graded the sleeve, the arm arm size seams so that it's a lot less thick as well. I had so much fun putting the zipper in because this was the first time I used a real zipper foot. It made a huge difference. Okay, I am ready for the second to last step and that is sewing up the side seams. So right now the dress is just looking very flat because it needs that structure, but I did get the zipper in the back sewn in. Which again, it doesn't look quite great. Ignore the trash bag. But I am just so pleased with the shape. Really excited about that, so I'm just... Oh, and <laughs> I am really happy about how perfectly I got these pieces to match up in the back of the zipper. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the side seams, but first I have to, I forgot about this, I have to tack these sleeves down while they're still flat. I used a tiny zigzag stitch to invisibly tack down the fluttery layered bits of the lace on the sleeves. The side seams were sewn from the sleeve to the skirt hem. I'm not sure why I did this, as it's best practice to sew from the skirt hem up. I made a 6 to 7 inch facing for the hem, which I stitched down and then edge stitched. In order to prevent any stitching from sewing, I hand stitched the facing down. Originally, I planned to add an organdy dust ruffle to support and protect the train of the skirt. I enjoyed this immensely as it gave me the opportunity to use my ruffling foot on my 66 Singer. In the end though, the ruffle had to be removed since it prevented the skirt from draping as gracefully as the bride wanted.
Here at the end, I've included a couple snapshots and little short video clips I took from the rehearsal and the wedding itself. I hope you enjoy them. Thank you, Kim Horst Photography, for giving me permission to use your photos.